Here we are at your uh, local by and large get it all grocery store. And uh, so the whole idea between on this cooking video that we're doing is I want to show you how to uh, a different way to cook this goose might be intriguing to you. Um, so, but <clears throat> um, we're going to try some dipping sauces with it. And rather than making the dipping sauces, I'm more concerned on showing you how to to uh, make the goose is we're going to go in here and we're going to buy a couple ingredients to make the goose and some dipping sauces here that uh, might think that uh, would go well with it. Um, uh, by far, you can walk in and you can get your own dipping sauce or whatever you'd like to put with it. Um, but this is just a couple ideas that might, uh, might work and might uh, be interesting to you. Hey, so here we go. We're getting ready to do our, um, our uh, pecan crusted uh, goose breast. So of course we had to buy some pecans here and uh, we also had to get some breadcrumbs here, some panko breadcrumbs. Um, you can just use regular breadcrumbs if you like. And then obviously we need to have some eggs for the, uh, for the mixture to bread them with, a little bit of milk uh, to mix with the eggs. And then for the dipping sauce here, we're gonna go with an apricot and sriracha dip here. I'll mix that together. And then we're also going to go with a Thai sweet uh, chili sauce. It's uh, number two on the hot scale. And uh, we're also gonna use some sour cream and horseradish and make a small sour cream and horseradish sauce. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's, uh, we're gonna uh, make our pecan crusted um, goose slivers here out of the goose breast. I'm gonna start out, we're gonna make a breading mix here, a standard breading mix. So we're gonna take two eggs, we're going to put them in a bowl. We're going to beat them up. And then we're going to add about a cup of milk. Maybe about three quarters of a cup. You know, as chefs, we don't like to measure anything. That's not true. And what work that's going to do is, uh, is we're doing the flour, egg wash, and the panko breading mix. And it's going to make everything stick to it. The flour sticks to the goose. The egg wash sticks to the flour. The breadcrumbs stick to the egg wash. So... We have our flour. That's about a cup, cup and a quarter of flour. We got our egg wash. Now we're going to prepare our panko breadcrumbs. So I'm going to add just a small pinch of salt in there. Another small pinch, just a pinch of pepper. And my pepper comes out slow. So, And then we're going to add just a little touch of onion salt. And I mean just a breath. Same thing with the garlic powder. We're going to add a breath of garlic powder. When I say a, a breath, that's like a sixteenth of a teaspoon. Then we're also going to take and we're going to add some uh, fresh or uh, some parsley flakes. And that's going to give us a little bit of color. And also give us a little bit of flavor. But I really like the color in there. So it's not just a plain old breadcrumb look. Then we're going to take, you can take some cayenne pepper, you can take some Cajun uh, mix here, you can take some Creole mix. I like to take a, just a little bit and add that in there. If you're using cayenne pepper, be careful. Just gives a little bit of flavor to it. Then, if I didn't mention already, this is about a cup, cup and a quarter, cup and a half of breadcrumbs. This is exactly one cup of ground uh, pecans. I'll buy them in just the large pieces and grind them myself. A little cheaper that way. And we're going to mix that together. Mix that all together. 
eat a good amount of the cons in there so that you can get that nice nutty flavor. And once you brown it in the oil, oh man, man it just is like fantastic. So we're going to see how goose tastes with this. And hopefully I have a feeling we're going to come out with some something really good here. Okay, now to prepare our goose breast. And I take my goose breast out. That was a nice goose there. Nice breast on that goose. We're going to trim this fat off. Very lightly. We don't want to lose all to too much meat. So, and that little silvery stuff we got going on here, that's like a silver skin. So we want to, we call that silver skin in food service. And that's a little tough. So goose tends to be, a little, wild goose tends to be a little tough in itself. So we don't want to have anything that makes it uh, any work, you know, and it doesn't uh, inhibit it a little bit more. So make it tougher than what we need to. So I'm just trimming all that off. i got a blood spot right there. And keep in mind, you always got to remember something here. When you shot this animal, you got to be careful because you got to remember the shot pellets are still in there. You can try to dig them out the best you can, find them, but it really hurts the teeth when you uh, bite down on one of them. You might be taking a trip to the old dentist and we know how much that costs. So I'm cleaning all this off right now. Just cleaning this breast up. And you want a good uh, sharp knife to do this. So I'm going to walk away from the camera for one second here. And... I'm going to wash this breast off just to make sure I got it's clean and I want to wipe off my counter. Maybe something we could cover, and I get this asked a lot in being a chef, is I'm asked about knives. What kind of knives? What kind of knife is this? What kind of knife is that? What kind of knife are you using there? How to sharpen a knife? What's the best brand of knife? Um, and uh, what's the difference between these two steels? So, you know what, maybe that would be a fun thing to do is uh, cover that kind of thing and answer some of those questions. So hit the thumbs up, you know, on the uh, down below and uh, give me a good comment there. Give me a like and a good comment and uh, tell me what you want to see. If you want to see that kind of thing, that would be great. I'd love to bring it to you. You just got to let me know what you want. All right, so here's our, uh, our goose breast. I'm going to dry it off a little bit. And I will tell you, I like to use it when I do this. I like to have it just a little bit frozen. And it is just a little bit frozen inside there yet. It's easier to work with. So now what we want to do here is we're going to use this knife. And we're going to cut some thin, probably like quarter inch uh, slices. Maybe just a little bit more than a quarter inch. And we're going to start off, get take that off of there. We're going to take and do about quarter inch slices, just like that. And the reason we want to cut them thin is because wild goose tends to be tough and chewy. And by cutting it thin, it helps uh, reduce its chewiness. We're going to cut all of this. Hopefully we'll look for some shot in there. I see a hole where it went in, and I don't remember if I dug that one out or not. And once you cut this, you can always feel for it also. You'll feel a lump. But 
these all arrange these all nice on the plate. This is a great snack, man. This is great. You can serve this for dinner, or you can serve it just for something to munch on. take that bad boy and we're gonna see what I did there I just turned my knife over flat on my knife and I'm tapping it just a little bit it breaks it up a little bit made it nice and flat okay okay so here we go we're gonna go ahead and bread these a while you know one thing I did not do I like to put just a little pinch of salt and just a little pinch of pepper into my flour because it's right up against the meat itself. It helps to season that meat just a little bit. Now, this is a typical three-way uh, breading. Flour, egg wash, um, and breadcrumbs. No matter what you do, you're doing chicken tenders, you're doing anything like that, uh, breaded chicken breast, uh, country fried steak, all the same thing, all the same way. Um, so it, basically what happens here is this piece of meat is put into here, into the, into the flour. We shake it off a little bit. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not left-handed. Um, and then we put it into the egg wash. So we can put all this in here and get the flour coated on it. And we want to get it all coated on there. And like I said earlier, the flour sticks to the meat. The egg wash sticks to the flour. And the breadcrumbs stick to the egg wash. And that's just a, a common breading system. So we're going to get all this in here. And it's okay that it soaks for a little bit. We've got to get that flour wet. Or else the, the breadcrumbs don't stick to it. So if you notice, I'm shaking it off. I'm shaking off the excess. Two reasons. You'll have big clumps on your meat, and it won't, the breadcrumbs won't stick to it. And also, you get too much flour into your egg wash, it becomes like a, a goopy slurry. Man, I can't wait. My, uh, I'm already drooling here. I'm really anxious to try to see how this works. I've done something similar, but this is the first time for, for this kind of a, with a, the pecans. I was anxious about the flavor. And you see I'm getting it all in there. And don't be afraid, you know, please, write down a comment. Send me some comments. Nobody's, hardly anybody's sending me any comments. Send me some comments. Tell me what you want to see. So now, we push all this down in there, and what I like to do is reach down, and I grab the ones off the bottom that have been soaking, and I'm going to lay it in there and roll the breadcrumbs right over top and push them on, and push them right on. Sprinkle a little bit of breadcrumbs on your plate, so that helps to keep them dry, your species of meat dry after you bread them. And they don't get soggy. And I hope my hand's not in the way that you can see what I'm doing here. Because you got to have one wet hand, one dry hand. So I'm going to do it again. Put it there. Oop, i got two pieces. Got to hurry. You don't want to slop them all onto there because this, your breadcrumbs will become one great big gooey slurry. Uh, so you want to put them on there and pat the breadcrumbs right away. And you can kind of overlap them a little bit. Just a little. It's okay. Press hard. You know, you don't need to break the dish, but I'm pressing that hard. But uh, guys, you know, sometimes guys like to get a little overzealous. And this is just something easy you can put together. You don't even have to use panko breadcrumbs. You can use, use seasoned breadcrumbs. You don't even have to put uh, pecans in them. You could put walnuts in it. You could just do it plain. 
Um, you could just do your breadcrumbs real spicy with the Creole seasoning or the, uh, the Cajun seasoning or the cayenne pepper. Okay, we're almost done here. We're coming down to the end. And I can taste it already, man. I can taste it already. As old Justin Wilson used to say, Ooh, boy. I don't know if anybody remembers Justin Wilson or not. He was a great Cajun cook. He was. He was fun to watch on TV, and he taught, actually taught people how to cook. And he was a storyteller. Okay, there's our last piece. No more in there. Okay, I'm going to clean up now. Okay, so in the meantime here, we got our goose breaded. And it's sitting there waiting. I just sprinkle just a little bit of bread crumb on top. Just so they don't uh, get soggy, dry out. To get, or get soggy, not dry out. Uh, but we're going to make our, our dipping sauce here right now. So, um, what we're going to start off with is we did buy this pre-made Thai uh, ch uh, sweet chili sauce. It's uh, on the um, uh, two flames on the five flame rating scale. So we're going to put some... Put some of that in there so we can try that. And me, mm, smells delicious. Next, we're going to do a little bit of sour, uh, sour cream. And unfortunately, they were all sold out of wasabi tonight, like wasabi paste. So I did just get some sour cream, I mean, uh, it's sour cream, more radish. And we're going to try it with this. Same difference, just a little bit different. Uh, a little bit of horseradish in with the sour cream. And we put a little bit in there, and then what the best thing to do is taste it and see what your strength is. Which is what I'm going to do right now. That's delicious. Next, this is something that I used to serve with a pork dish, and it's excellent. We're going to use it as cold, with uh, or room temperature, with uh, with goose. So we took a little bit of apricot preserves. I think I want a little bit more in there. take that, we're going to mix it up a little bit and loosen it up so it's not a big chunk. Next, we're going to take and put some sriracha sauce in there. Careful. Careful. Add it to your liking, but be careful with it. It uh, can mega overload. I always go by the thought that if it's not hot enough, I can always add some to it. But if you make it too hot, you can't take it away. So let's just give this a little try. That's pretty good. We need just a little. No, you know what? It's, it's creeping right up there. We'll put like one drop more in there. There we go. All right, two. Who's counting? There it is. That spicy's right back there. It catches you at the end. And that's what we want. I don't like foods that are so hot they just burn your mouth out because basically after the first taste. You can't taste anything anymore. You shut down your taste buds. Um, I like to have that flavor. Uh, I like to taste what I'm eating plus the heat. So, but it's all in the it's all in the person who is um, who's eating it. Um, I know that over time you get a little bit used to how hot something is, so you can eat something even that's a little bit hotter. So, so there's our sauces. We got 
Again, we got the Thai sweet chili sauce. We got the horseradish sour cream. And we got the apricot sriracha sauce. Okay, let's stop talking and let's get cooking. I got my 15 inch cast iron skillet out. And we're gonna crank her up here. We're gonna set it on about medium high heat. And we're gonna put enough olive oil in here to give us about a quarter inch, not even a quarter inch, maybe eighth of an inch across there. I don't know how well you can see that, but I love cooking in cast, and maybe that's something else we can talk about. We can talk about cooking with cast iron, how to uh, uh, care for it, how to clean it up. If you find some old stuff at a yard sale or you got a hold of your great grandmother's or something like that. So right now we are heating up our oil. And I'm going to get a fork. Which will help us to uh, flip our, um, our meat as we're cooking it. So it takes a couple minutes to, uh, to heat up here, especially the cast. What I like cooking with cast iron so much for is, first of all, it's the original nonstick, and it is nonstick if you know how to use it and you know how to care for it. Uh, number one big rule, I won't get into it too much, but do not use soap and water on them. Do not. Second reason is, is because the cast is thicker and it it's, uh, holds the heat and distributes the heat more evenly across the pan so that you don't have one's a hot spot and one's a not. I mean, all pans will have that because of the burner where the heat is. Of course, it's going to be a little hotter right in there, but with cast, it's not as bad. The other thing with cast iron is you'll have them forever and you'll hand them down to your children and your children's children and then uh, guess what they don't really want to cook with it right that's the joke I get a lot of people to ask me about cast iron how to deal with it how to clean it up how to care for it and we can see our oils really starting to flow pretty pretty freely here so we're getting we're getting nice and hot if you like, you can actually use a thermometer in there if you wanted to. Now we can test this by taking one piece and I just shook a little bit of this breadcrumb in there, and it's not frying yet. It didn't go So we want it to do that. And then that means it's hot enough. If it's, your oil's not hot enough, your breadcrumbs will not brown right away, and it'll soak up the oil, and then it'll taste greasy. And obviously you got it too hot, it burns everything. So it is, it is very important. You want to get to about 350 degrees. And when I, now that these little pieces are in here, I can start to see that they're starting to sizzle a little bit. We're almost there. It takes a little longer for cast iron to heat up. But it's worth the wait. Hey, so smash that thumbs up button down there. Please become a subscriber. And please, give me some comments on things, the things you'd like to see. We talked about maybe doing a knife uh, sharpening and a knife care and, and identifying knives. Uh, now we're talking about um, do, working on cast iron here and talking a little bit about cast iron in an episode. And, you know, we can also um, do something like uh, how to sharpen knives. Um, that's a big question that I get all the time. And the other thing is, is, is maybe we should talk about a little bit of sanitation. 
on how to sanitize, you notice I use a wooden cutting board. Um, you probably ask me why am I using a wooden cutting board over plastic. And I have some reasons why I like to do that. Um, and uh, it's not something I want to go into right now, but maybe we can do an episode on that. And how to, um, to sanitize uh, and keep your cutting board clean. So let's check this out again. We're going to take it. Now we're almost there. It's just starting to sizzle. We want it to sizzle just a little more. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit. And man, do I love to cook on gas. I'm not sure I know a chef that doesn't. So here we go. She's hot enough now. Wait one second here. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Now, goose and duck is not like poultry chicken. You can eat it rare, mid-rare, medium, and it is best to eat them a little bit on the rarer side. Now these pieces, I'm not going to cook them until they're uh, completely well done. But if you'd only like it well done, that's no reason you can eat it well done. But it will be a little bit tougher. Especially wild goose. Alright, there we're rolling now, man. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now I'm, I'm placing them in spots here. And I'm remembering which ones I put in first. I started here, I worked my way down, and I'm going to flip them in progression. I turned my heat up just a little bit. Oh yeah. That's it. Next thing you know, I'm going to start saying BAM. Let's see who gets that joke. We got our plate here to, to put them on after we're done frying. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Look at this, this looks gorgeous. So what I'm looking for is to get it brown. The bottom there, that's a nice brown one. Got a little bit more. We gotta get that as nuts to get uh, the pecans to get that nice brown on it. Just gives it such an awesome flavor. And hopefully, you all can just see that sizzling away. And it's gonna go quick. So, here we go. Let's check that one out. Not quite. I'm going to spin him around a little bit. There, there we go. This guy looks ready. This guy looks like he's getting ready. Slide this up into the hotter spot there a little bit. I'm going to flip him around. And that's one thing about cooking. You know, you just got to you gotta work, work your, your item here in the pan. that one out and flip him over. Oh my word. Is this looking awesome or what? Oh my word, this is looking awesome. Look at this. Now we're rolling, baby. We're going quick now. Alright, now it's time for the true test. We're going to taste what these bad boys taste like. So here's our... Uh, Here's our, our panko breaded uh, pecan crusted uh, duck, our goose breast. I keep saying duck. Goose breast. And you know what? I brought my lovely wife into here. and But she's camera shy. She doesn't want to be on this film. But she wants to taste this. And she's going to give us uh, a, uh, what sauce she likes best and what she thinks of it. But you know what? First of all, I'm going to sneak. A, I am going to sneak a piece. I can't wait. I can't wait. Now it is a little, a little hard to cut there. Would you hand me a knife there? 
don't hit the camera. But that's typical of goose. Okay. Hang on one second there, honey. And uh, I'm going to try some of the wasabi sour cream. And that's going to be my plate. And would you hand me another spoon, please? So I'm going to try this one. What do we don't do? We don't double dip. We don't dip out of the bowl, right? I don't know where. That's freaking awesome. That is freaking awesome. Honey, I can't wait till you try this. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give her a, a little dollop on each plate. That's the sweet Thai chili sauce. This is a little on the sweeter side. This is the sriracha apricot. Um, my favorite. How can it be my favorite? Didn't taste the other ones yet. And it's the horseradish um, sour cream. So I'm going to cut these into little bites for you, hon. Do you know what I call her, hon? Yeah, I'm really excited about this video. I, I am just really excited about doing these videos and sharing the um, sharing uh, some cooking knowledge here and some recipes and get people eating their, their game that they shoot. Right, here we go. There you go. We're going to wait. Taste each one. Do you need a drink of water in between each? No? While she's doing that, I'm going to set up my taster. Which one did you taste first? The apricot? Or the, oh, that's the Thai sauce that we bought. And I'm going to pick this up. And if you can see in the camera here, uh, that's a, this is about medium, mid-rare hitting closer to medium. It's the best. That's that's the best. You go over this, it gets a little more chewy. But if you like it chewy or you like it well done, there's no reason you can't eat it like that. This be uh, heads up that it's going to probably be a little bit on the uh, chewier side for you. How you making out over there, lovely? All right, my dearest wife. How do you like the flavor of the goose so far? Really good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So we're on our third try here with the, uh, the uh, I keep wanting to say wasabi. Can you believe they were out of wasabi? Can't believe that. Now we're on to the horseradish sour cream. Is it a tie? A three-way tie? Them. What do you like? The uh, the Thai sauce and uh, the uh, horseradish sour cream. Mm -hmm. There we got it. And what do you think about the goose? Is it tender? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Very tender. Good, good, good. Thank you, hun. Now I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try this. Now I'm on to the uh, the Thai sauce here, and I do love Oriental foods. Oh man, got a nice uh, nice aroma to it. delicious. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That goose is perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now we're going to try the uh, apricot and sriracha sauce that we made here. sweeter. That sriracha kicks you in the end. Did you get that kick in the end or not? Mm -hmm. A little bit? And if you like it more kick on to it, you can have more sriracha. You just got to be careful with it. And I think I think this is my favorite. The horseradish sour cream. Mm -hmm. I really do. I like the Thai sweet chili sauce. Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I really like that too. The mm. creamy one is a little rich for me. Yeah. For me. I, but I think I think most people would love it. Yeah. I think you can only eat so much of that because it's very yeah, rich because it's sour cream. The other one I feel like I could eat a lot more of. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. It's a uh, panko pecan crusted uh, goose. I said it goose, not duck. Goose with uh, with three sauces there, and you can use whatever sauce you want. You can go and you can make something yourself. You can make a really spicy barbecue. You can make a plain barbecue. Go to the store and buy whatever sauce you want. This would even be really good with ranch, like a spicy ranch dip. What do you think? Yeah, that I, would be or excellent. A spicy barbecue. Spicy barbecue yeah. or ranch, you know, like the ranch where they make the spicy ranch now, you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, even... That, they call it Southwestern Ranch. Yeah. I oh, yeah. That. Or even a balsamic glaze would be really good with that, where you mm -hmm. dip it in a balsamic glaze. Yeah. Balsamic's a vinegar, uh, balsamic vinegar, and it's reduced. You, buy, you can buy it already reduced in a sauce in the store, and it has a little bit of a sweeter side to it. So, And uh, that would be fantastic. So there we go. Ah!